Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance. In this video today, we're going to be talking about how we can fit um, our power training into our training plan for our athletes and how we can progress um, our exercises to achieve optimal power for our athletes in their sport. So power training has a lot of gray area. There is no one single exercise that's going to make you more powerful as much as people claim. And it has to be understood that almost all exercises actually involve some form of power. But when we talk about power in terms of athletic performance, um, there's no real um, true definition that we can um, apply. This is going to be different from the... Uh, the physics terms or the electrical terms um, of power so we need to understand that we're talking about athletic performance so basically the exercises that we want for our athletes are basically going to be these ballistic type exercises which means there is no deceleration in the contractions involved so if we have a look at this guy sprinting as he pushes out of the blocks there's no deceleration. He's not stopping the contraction as he reaches full extension. He's trying to push through and propel his body and actually push it forward. So exercises that um, allow that to happen are going to be probably the most beneficial for most athletes. Um, so exercises like running, jumping and throwing, um, they require these ballistic contractions where we're actually attempting to propel the body or an implement um, as far as possible so there's no deceleration so exercises that we can use we can generally categorize these into uh, Olympic lifting type exercises and their variations so we can have full lifts power variations and pull variations and if you want to um, see some more on and go into more detail on which actual variations to use for the Olympic lifts in terms of power. Um, you can check out the use of weightlifting in the physical preparation training of non-weightlifting athletes. Another video on this channel if you want to find out more. So jumping is another um, sort of category of power exercise that we can use and we can have uh, slower jumps, fast jumps and jumps that involve or don't involve the stretch shortening cycle. Uh, for more detail on jumping specifically, you can see this video uh, using jump training to develop explosive power for athletic performance on this channel for more details. And another category we can um, use for power development, just like this picture here, is implement throws. So we can do medicine ball throws or other implements that we can throw, that we can do safely. Um, and we can do light, heavy, and we can do linear or multi-directional type throws. So in terms of um, what I mentioned before, the slow versus fast type power, um, this is based on the force velocity curve. So this is the force velocity curve here. And basically this, is, this relationship is telling us that the more force exercise that we can produce more force in, um, the slower the velocity will be. And the higher the velocity, the, the lower the force. So if we think, for example, a back squat, if we take our 50% 1RM, we can move that a lot faster, so that would be somewhere around here, um, a lot faster than if we um, took our one rep max and tried to do that as fast as we can. Even though we're trying to do it as fast as we can, it's not going to move at the same velocity as um, a lighter weight. And the same thing goes for um, any exercise. The more, the more load we put on, the slower we can actually move. And the less load we have, the faster we can move that uh, implement or our body or the uh, load. So power training can be velocity dependent. So we can work on slow power and fast power. So slow power, we're going to be talk. We'll be talking about more in this area of the uh, force velocity curve. So um, our force is higher and our velocity is slightly lower but we're not right at this maximal strength end and our fast power is going to be more up here so more on the higher velocity side with lower force and so the distinct difference between these is that the slower the power is the more sort of muscular force is going to, going to be, contribute to the movement so the more strength based it will be 
and the faster type power exercises are going to be more uh, more reliant on reactive strength, so the elastic properties of the uh, tissue. So that's going to sort of involve more stretch shortening cycle and more um, sort of elastic tendon um, involvement in that uh, in these exercises. So in terms of progressing the actual power exercises, um, we have a few different things we need to ensure we're doing when we do this. Um, the first one is that our exercise selection wants to go from general to specific. So if we are a field-based athlete, so we involve running, jumping, that sort of thing, um, we, we don't want to do jumping first and then progress into um, Olympic lifting. We would rather see it the other way around. So we have the general power type exercises, throwing, jump, uh, throwing, Olympic lifting. And then we go more into the specific jumping and uh, maybe some throwing. It's also dependent on the sport. So the force velocity curve, what we just talked about, um, is that we generally want to progress from higher force, so slower type power and lower velocity to the lower force and higher velocity, so more that fast power. And this is going to be because it again follows this principle of general to specific. Most, um, most athletes in most sports require this higher velocity type power, um, especially if they're running or jumping type athletes. So stretch shortening cycle, um, again, we want to go general to specific, so we probably want um, at the beginning of our um, plan or our phase, we would want less stretch shortening cycle involvement because it's going to be more general and less specific to the sport. And then we want to progress to higher stretch shortening cycle involvements, um, especially in these running and jumping sports. So that could mean something like um, loaded jumps or um, jumps without a counter movement. And then we could go into more drop jumps or reactive type jumps. Um, and in terms of our force vector, so we want our direction to be maybe start with more linear type exercises. So our Olympic lifts, forward throws, that sort of thing, uh, vertical jumps. And then we want to sort of start getting more specific and turn that into multi-directional um, power. So, um, if we do some just vertical jumping and vertical linear Olympic lifting, we can then later on do uh, maybe some jumping in a lateral direction. In multi we could do some rotational throwing, that sort of thing. And that's more specific to field sports because um, some sports don't actually require any multi-directional rotational power. Um, so we're going to be, we have to ensure that we're our general to specific um, implementation is actually also specific to the sport that we're talking about. So as an example, taking all that into all this information into consideration, we can put this into, um, this is a very general plan of an example progressions for a field sport athlete to someone who requires more running and jumping type um, movements in their sport. So we can start off early in the training plan with more Olympic Olympic lifting variations and maybe some loaded jumps. So this is going to be um, heavier and uh, less, less velocity and less stretch shortening cycle involvement. We can then progress to maybe some heavy medicine ball throws and maybe some counter movement type jumps. So then we get starting to get some, um, some faster type power in here and a little bit of stretch shortening cycle involvement and then we might progress finally as we're getting more specific to lighter medicine ball throws maybe in multi multiple directions and reactive type jumps so like repeat jumps or drop jumps or something like that so as we can see on this scale a lot more general here and it gets more specific so that's it for this presentation guys thanks for watching if you enjoy this informative content you can find movement and performance on facebook and instagram uh, with the links here and on youtube you can subscribe if you haven't already for more informative videos in the future so on facebook and instagram you'll find these uh, research infographics which is basically 
the uh, latest research made into these simple pictures that are easy to understand so you can stay up to date with the latest research in sports performance training. You'll also find um, videos of athletes from a range of sports doing some training. Um, and that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and got something out of it.